Tom Vassell's Top 100 Games of All Time. Mike Delicio, bravissimo, sporadically bored, but never pianissimo. Z, y'all see, voice of the people. Good morning, everybody, and welcome to the first full week of January. Oh, no, it was last week, wasn't it? The second full week of January. That's just <laughs> as important. That's just very as exciting. Important. Yeah, that's just another week. Okay. It's uh, the but, top 100 week. And it's Kickstarter week, baby. This is a big week, and I've got rocket shoes. Did you see the rocket shoes? No. Oh, oh, in the uh, yeah. I was like looking. I'm like, you're wearing the same shoes I'm <laughs> yeah, wearing. I was like, what do you mean? But mine have Sketches rockets. Sketches is really stepping up their game. Ah, <laughs> yeah. Rocket shoes. Mm -hmm. As a side note, is it bad of me to think I was like I like these shoes so much? Yes. I considered buying six pairs that might last me the rest of my life. Yeah. No, in yeah, case they in case they go out of style or something. Here in Miami, it's a good idea. I will tell you, I found out uh, within the last few days that these shoes are not good in the snow. <laughs> they go right through. I got wet socks as soon as I go out there. These shoes are not snow shoes. Mike, what is snow? I wish I didn't know, Tom. <laughs> I ah, wish okay, I You guys would. actually have the exact same shoes? No, not quite. Mine have fake laces on them. Yeah, mine have no fake laces. Skechers go walk. I'm telling you, Z, if you've Minor never Skechers worn these, stretch fit. sponsored by Skechers. Stretch fit's better because I like not having to, you just stick your feet and they go in. Yeah, these don't, I still do that in these, but they, they don't have the, ruined them. They don't have that special little back thing there. <laughs> Guys, thanks for the super chat, Steve. Thanks, Steve. I'm Tom Vassell. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm going to go shopping for Skechers <laughs> go walk. <laughs> All right, before we get started, Mike did point out that, hey, we actually do have a Kickstarter that's launching today at noon. This is a big deal for us. So we want you to consider if you like what we've done, if you enjoyed this list, or even if you don't enjoy this list, you know, consider backing it. Go to DiceHourKickstarter.com. Mm -hmm. And some of our backers from last year, we want to do some shout outs to them from, um, well, we, how do you pronounce it again? Juso? I don't know. Oh, come on. You making me do this again? It says Z. It says, Juso, I am sure Z can butcher my last name. <laughs> he had to, hold on. He had to lati. Andrew Belleville. Um, uh, okay, jumping down here. Trevor Douglas Johnson, Tomas Chabot Chaviera, Steve Isaacson, Brad Lucas, Jim and Donna Molasto, Tom L., Anthea Georgie, and Alex Ogden from Chipping Sodbury, UK. Chipping Sodbury? That's what I it says. love that. That's a great town. They want us way better village. names than we do. They're pubs. They do. Towns. Yeah, they do. Matthias yeah, Barkles. Speak that old English. Mm. And Jens Klein. All right. So mm -hmm. that's happening. Our top 100 games are happening. All right. Let's do the top 100 thing I always say every year. Okay. We say top 100 games of all time. But what we mean is top 10 100 games right now, what we think of them. Yes. They change every year because we're human beings. Um, Speak for yourself. <laughs> yeah, well, I'm a human it. being that can fly through space with my shoes. Mm -hmm. Skechers, go Thank jump. Thank you, JB, for the super chat. <laughs> but anyhow, <laughs> he wants the Back to the Future shoes. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> yeah, things change. I didn't put any legacy games on my list because mm. as much as I love legacy games, I make my list as I want to play, you know, how much I want to play the game now if you offer to play the game. And yeah, legacy right. games, I finished them. Uh, yeah, I got some. I did this the usual way I do uh, the last few years. Anyway, I don't look at any previous content. I I do grab that list, whatever it contained. I throw things in there that for some reason weren't in it, mm -hmm. and then I rank all that without looking at whatever was uh, you know uh, previously ranked. And then I might massage it a little bit. But right now, already I'm looking at the first ten here, and I'm like, oh, oh, that ended up higher than that. What? Okay, so. These things are going to be, again, they are not infallible lists. 
No, they're 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 infallible to us, I guess. I mean, for for this snapshot in sure. time, uh, sure. this list has more changes on it than in the previous four years combined. But that um, that has not happened to me. Mine that, has that some did. changes. And and there's a reason. I did the same method that you did. Same method I always do. Put in last year's list. Put in some things that that have maybe come in. Do it. Maybe a little massaging at the end. But my my list this year better reflects the changes in me as a gamer, mm -hmm. right? So I just, my tastes have changed over the years, and I think my list now finally reflects that a little bit, little bit more. I was holding on to certain things for nostalgia's sake more than, gosh, I haven't played this game in two years. Should it be on my top 100? That's you know? interesting. So, yeah. All right. I'm excited. Yeah. Um, we, I, we had a super chat, but I missed it. Yeah. Um, the... Uh, thanks to Jason for the super chat. Staying up late in Australia. Wow. Um, what was the other thing I was going to say about these top? Oh, this is my 19th year. So wow. next year I'm going to make a big deal about it. Uh, top 100. Nice flex. Well, you already did four. Look at this guy drinking out of the he, Starbucks cup. Uh, <laughs> talking with, about nice flex, and then he drinks this water. Is Starbucks, this is no, the Starbucks Zero. This is Venti this Water. New, this is Crystal Starbucks. Crystal <laughs> it's a crystal latte. Make it happen. Uh, uh, Can you uh, imagine? Uh, 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 Make uh, uh, it happen. Oh man, crystal that would be latte. Wild. Be, you oh, want to know how? That's with my brain. If I drink that and it tastes like a. Do coffee. you know how insane that would go? Do you remember yeah. the SNL commercial, the crystal gravy? Oh yes, the crystal gravy was great. <laughs> pouring it all over their potatoes. Oh, oh. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Well, we got a lot of games to go through, so we're doing our three, and we're doing the people's choice and. People ask when there's everyone else that's coming, and Roy and Camille and all of them. They'll be doing theirs later this year. See so, the Kickstarter. Yeah, see Kickstarter for that. But yes, that will happen later this year. So here we go with 100. Number 100. Hey, that was a, a great game. That was the nothing personal. Is that what that was? It was. So for these, for intros 100 to 11, okay. I've gone far and wide okay. to ask people to do them for us. Uh -huh. So that was Alex Ratcliffe from Board Game Co. Yeah. And just as everyone, so everyone knows, um, if you weren't asked, it's because I was just going through my email randomly, and I started with the A's. Uh, to go ah. through, but I also just randomly pick them, and the numbers are random too. There's no build up to, gotcha. and there's no Kinesia. I don't want you to get too excited. <laughs> I don't have his email. <laughs> I do not have Kinesia. Call, call him up right now. Get him <laughs> yeah. on WeChat. He's just can say hello. It's it's Kinesia's and then his wife. <laughs> <laughs> Just <laughs> con contacts, yeah, speed contacts. And his kids. He's yeah, like, well, sorry, kids. I have to, you know, you got to make room for the good doctor. Priorities in life. So I have to give Alex his top 100, or his number 100. I don't know what Alex picked for his number 100. No, he was just introducing me. Oh, him. I gotcha. All right. What, what is I your 100? That. Okay. My number 100 is a new game to the list. You're going to hear me say that about eight times in this particular bracket. Jeez. It's a lot of new games towards the bottom. And people are going to be shocked. Number 100 will shock you. I'm shocked. Is My, it a Kinesia? It is not a Kinesia. Was it ice? No. Okay, I'm just randomly guessing now. My number 100 is... Checkers. The Crew. What? <laughs> <laughs> Oh, yes! Nine. No! 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 no. <laughs> here, this is the greatest top 100 ever! Here is where Mike Delisio eats crow live in front of <gasps> Please, thousands oh, wait, of already, people. Right. Look, I, it was for comedic effect, calling it a flash in the pan. Um, I but really. It wasn't funny. <laughs> you all just laughed. Hello! And Look, it was a long time. Oh, oh, it was an icebox was the long time. Here's the thing. Um, at the time that the crew came out, right, I enjoyed it. I think I gave it a 7.5 maybe uh, at mm -hmm, the time. Mm -hmm, um, mm -hmm. I happened to get into a little flame war between the crew and Hanabi, and I was not willing to give up on my stance that Hanabi would have a longer impact. That's where Got all it. of this flash in the pan stuff came Got from. It. Okay. The crew is a great game. It's and and it's grown on uh, in esteem with me, not even necessarily for the design itself, which is good. Very, very good. But I do think that this was maybe the catalyst for 
this influx of trick-taking games that we're seeing. So it's here both for its design pedigree, the fact that I would happily play it right now, but also for, I think, its importance in these games becoming a bigger part of the hobby for at oh, least a little the while. the trick-taking renaissance. It is a trick-taking renaissance. the flash in the pan. It, no, it flushes That's me... That's what it is. It flushes uh, me being you, able to just come out there. One. I did pick the first one because that's the one I've played more. Okay. Um, but 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 the other one is great. The the Deep Sea is really probably a better game, but this one I think is the one that belongs on my list because that's the one I've played more of and played through the whole thing. And so my number one hundred, hmm. the crew. I feel like the crew on your top one hundred is going to be a flash in the pan. <laughs> <laughs> Very positive. It's only my hundred. It could this be is gone. This is gone next year. Mm -hmm. My number 100, um, I couldn't find it on last year's list here, uh, but is, there's a few. What's funny is I have quite a few here that I don't think have been, or at least weren't in last year's top 100, but they're not new games. They just ended up in this I bracket. I have many games on my list that are not new, but yes, me too. Up on the list. Me yeah. too. Yeah, it's going to happen. So anyway, my number 100 is Summoner Wars 2nd oh. Edition. Oh. Which I did finally get around to playing um, this year or last year. I don't, well, not this year, clearly. 2023 or 2022. I played second edition finally and really liked it. Ended up getting second edition and sort of, you know, uh, upgrading my, my Summoner War stuff. And I really do enjoy it. I think they did a nice job taking that game I already very much liked and kicking it up, making it a little more interesting, having a little sort of... I don't know if I would call it design space, but it feels a little more, gives you a little more breathing room. And I like that. I like that it's a little less uh, self-serious, maybe, in its artwork and its vibe. I really enjoy the game. Great uh, <clears throat> two-player head-to-head game and um, has a lot of years of development behind it because, again, the, the game's been out and they've had so many factions. When they got the second edition and decided to do that, I thought it was like, okay, this is a game that is, you know, just just so clean and so well put together because of all that experience behind it. So, my number 100, Summoner Wars, baby, second edition. And nice. It kind of makes sense because you like those CCG-type games, yeah. and this adds a <coughs> board element to it, basically, too. Right, so, right. Yeah. yeah, I mean, I already like the first one. Like yeah. I said, I think the second is just a cleaner product. All right, my number 100 is new to my list, but also... I, I played it for the first time this year, but technically I don't think it made any of our t end of the year list because I want to say it's actually a 2022 game for whatever reason. Okay. I don't okay. even know if I'm pronouncing it right. Valbara. Oh, yeah, the, the release yeah. of this is weird. Um, yeah, I think it's a 2022. Like, yeah. I, I, this would have definitely made my, my like surprise of the year. But this is a little game that I didn't think much about. I didn't like the font on the front. <laughs> I just was like, eh, whatever. And then one of you two taught it to me. I don't remember which one of you taught it to me. You're welcome. Thank mm -hmm. you. And I really just, I love this game. It takes, it's very similar to Citadels or Mission Red Planet where you play the card and everyone's revealing them and the order matters and then you're just collecting lands. It has some of the best parts of like Dice Town and Citadels and yeah. Mission Red Planet all in one small package. It's my go-to five-player uh, no one knows what to play. Have mm. you ever played this game? I really like it. It's a small little card game I find to be really enjoyable. That's good stuff. I really like it, too. Um, I, I, I could see this being on my list eventually. I haven't played it enough, but it's a good one. But it's definitely one like at a con, and people oh are like, gosh, what should yeah. we play? I'm like, here, it's that's, so easy to teach. I need to play go this on one. My, that's going to go on my think of it when I'm on, a, on the cruise or, or a, at a retreat or something. Yeah. It needs to be on that list. Mm. All right, jumping to the people's choice. What number the 100. Come that is on. next, right? Come on, people. Mm. All right. So this was 106 last year for the people. So it's okay. moved up. Okay. It's, okay. it's the uh, third year it's been on us because the two years before that was 84, then 114. And this is Rajas of the Ganges. Wow. I still have not played Rajas of the Ganges. Well, they're coming out with the card with game. With the card now. game, yeah. So. No, no I'm a purist. <laughs> <laughs> I played it and I appreciate it, but I don't love it. I really like it. There's a lot of things. It has the same thing Ark Nova with the two crossing yeah. tracks. Right. Um, although it's a bigger deal in in Rajas. It is. Um, it has 
carpetstone tile laying in it. It has dice drafting and worker placement and move as far down the river as you want, but you can't go back. That's a lot of mechanisms. Oh, wow, it is, really? Yeah. It's got all of that. Okay. It does. Well, it's the brands, and it. Mm -hmm. I don't know. They just they made it all work in a really good, and the dice, the quality of those dice doesn't hurt. They look really they good. They look nice, yeah. yeah. So that's your number 100, Rajas of the Ganges. Right. Hey, Julie Ahern here with Van Ryder Games and at the table with the Dice Tower. This game was so close to the start, it was almost left out in the cold, so it's a good thing I brought a blanket. Number 99. Way <laughs> to represent, Julie. I like that a lot. I want one of those. I that's do, too. That's a great idea. That really, really mm -hmm. is. Great. Did she make that? Yes. She made it for Robert because he never wears T-shirts. He wears ties all the time. Ah. But he has all these shirts, and he didn't want to throw them away. So she made him that quilt out of all the t-shirts. It's that, a great idea. That is brilliant. That is brilliant. It's right. comfortable too. I was like, well. It looked, yeah, it looked very beautiful and comfortable. My number nine is new to the list. 99, yes. N number 99. I just <laughs> want to go to nine. Look, I got. let's get to the top ten right now. That's Friday. You got to wait. All right. It's a long week. All right. That's a lot of crystal lattes from now. My number 99 <laughs> is uh, new. New to the list. It's not a new game, but they okay. just released a updated version, a, a second or third edition of Nakosu Dice. Oh wow! Yeah, okay. this is a this another is, trick taking. This game. is yeah. There's a trend I'm noticing, and it is Mike Delicio's top 100 trick taking games. These are the these are the only two on this on this list. Yeah, I'll let you know what's on there. Don't so Nakosu that. Dice <laughs> is a, uh, a a game where you are playing relatively standard trick taking with uh -huh. cards, uh -huh. but you also have dice that you're going to be using as open, uh, as if they were cards in your hand. So the dice actually act as cards, but everyone can see those. Mm -hmm. And so you're playing trick taking in such a way that uh, you're, you're trying to utilize your dice and your cards, some information that's public to everybody, and then you obviously your cards are private information. It just is a really, really solid uh, design, and the, di the the addition of the dice means a lot. A game that you and I both recently, and all three of us played recently and liked it, you more than all of us, is, is uh, Mori. Mm -hmm. And it has a similar thing where you've got dice oh, that can be used Oh, I was wondering if they were the same game. They're not. No, they, I believe... They're not. Daniel, Daniel Newman, uh, I, the designer of Mori, I believe he cited this as an inspiration as part of it. So anyway, really good game. And I believe it's going to be easier to get a hold of for, for years. It was very hard to get a hold of, but mm -hmm. Kosu Dice, really solid game. What? You don't, I was have, you don't no. have one? Oh, you're next. I was laughing. No, I'm saying you don't have a Nakosu dice. No, I don't. Because Mike has one. Yeah, I do. I, I have one. I probably don't have half the games on his list. Well, okay, good. We <laughs> remember, when you, remember when you used to be the esoteric guy? I know. I know. Mm. All right. My number ninety-nine is new to the list and a new game, oh. and mostly a solo game. Oh, ninety-nine will shock you. <laughs> that's what we're saying. Uh -huh. Is that soldier one? Soldiers. Oh, oh, wait a minute. Could it be? Set in Salem? Possibly. Oh, so it's a sequel to the Soldier one. I can't remember. I you, were thinking one. you were thinking Resist. No, he resist. likes Witchcraft much oh, you better are thinking than Resist. Of, uh, resist? No, it's not that one. I did not like Resist that much. But Witchcraft, Woo! which is my number 99, it puts a spell on Resist. Yes. Okay? It, it, put a spell it, on you. This is straight up Solitaire, right? Does it have a two player variant? I don't know, and I don't care. I don't think it does. Okay? Lose your friends. <laughs> Witchcraft is a great solo game. It is. It really does give you a lot in this one box. It has that central mechanism of using your characters and, and playing them out either as hidden characters with a lesser power, but you get to keep them. They're they're you know working from the shadows. And in this game, by the way, the you have like a coven of witches, they're good characters. They're trying to save the town from evil external forces. But obviously, if you then play on the other side where you are exposing yourself and using, you know, overwhelming strength, then the town will turn against you and you lose that character. You don't no longer have access to them. So you need to manage that. How well, you know, what what am I going up against? Do I go with the hidden side of the character? Do I uh, go with the overt power but then lose access to them? It's really neat. Lots going on. It's got just enough of that little math that mm. the game makes you makes you think and, and you know, 
try to plan and figure out how you want to do it, but the theme is there. The fun, the families of characters are really neat. There's a draft at the beginning it's where you can build your own playing deck, which is really fun. And then on top of that, like I said, the content in the box, because you have that basic game. But then you can play these missions, all standalone, where you mix the deck up differently, the baddies that you're going up against. So you can play this thing for mm. a while from this small little box. Love the artwork, love the feel, the vibe of it is great. Yeah, uh, Witchcraft is a fantastic solitaire game. One of my new favorites in this style. And again, that's because my solo, when I want to play a solo game, I want it to be small footprint, pretty quick playing time, not like a big sprawling thing, you know. Uh, this one fits the bill just right. So that's my 99, Witchcraft. Good pick. All right, my number 99, it's the sixth year it's been on the list, and I suspect it will slide off because of many, many, many dice drafting games exist now, mm. and that is Pulsar 2849. Oh. Wow. I still really like this. I like still sushi games. Mm -hmm. It hangs on yet. It beat out some of those <clears> other <throat> things like Woodcraft. Yeah. Although yeah. I wonder if I'd play Woodcraft. Over. You know what? It's 99, Pulsar. That's right. Okay, so <clears> uh, dice drafting game. Doesn't have a great look, frankly, but there's so much going on with the technologies, I just really yeah. like this one. So that's my 99. Now, the People's Choice 99 has not been on the list since 2011, the first year we did this. Whoa. It was 50 then, now it comes on at 99, and <clears throat> I think it would be higher. Mm -hmm. When we put out the People's Choice, they use the Board Game Geek search engine to find mm -hmm. the games, and yeah. this game is hard to find in search engines. In fact, it used to be when I first was on Board Game Week, I could never find this game. Is it a small card game? No, it's no. going to be a Kanitsi game. It is a Kanitsi game. It's raw, though it's, it's a pain to find. Raw is a pain to find. Oh, now, we is. know why it's back on the list, because mm -hmm. the brand new version from 25th Century has put it back on people's radar. Yes. It's also like the definitive version of this game. Yes. Straight up. It's also easier to find on BGG now because you can just type in Raw 25th and it pops right up. <laughs> That's true. Huh? I don't 25th think most century, people yep. did that, right? Mm -hmm. But, yeah, but I think more people would put it on the list. But even still, it's back on the list now. Like I said, it was 50 in 2011 and then it's never shown up again. Right. And now it's back. Yeah, huh. the, the Rainar Sans is in full effect. Oh, here we go. There's another Sans. <laughs> I'm sick of Sans. Okay. Stop Sansing us. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Stop making Sans happen. Friday it comes out like several trick-taking games. He has several trick-taking games. I mean, yeah. I mean, what is it? New ones? Good ones, you said? Yeah. Wow. <laughs> wow. <laughs> wow. All right. Right? In fighting words. Now, so I'm far, the you. People's Choice has more Canizia games than Mike Delisio does. All right. True. Let's go to number 98. <laughs> So, we have seen two games so far. We have a lot more to go. Let's see what they got at number 98. Yeah, let's go. That was Tim, by the way. Dice Tower West. Dice Tower West. Sign up and come. It's coming soon. It's really soon, actually. It's very soon, it's yeah. great. No yeah. snow there. No. I, although, it did snow once when I lived in Vegas, but only once. It was just little flurries. It snows in the mountains nearby. Sure. It yeah. does, yeah, frequently, but even in Vegas, it does a little bit. All right, my number at 98 is a Reiner Kinesia trick taking game. Is it? No, but it is a Reiner Kinesia small card game. <laughs> my number at 98 is uh, one of many push your luck games that he's done, but this is one of my favorites. It is Circus Flow Cotty. Uh, oh, not that and one. And I either. always ah! pick this version because this is the version I have and this is the version I love. But there are many versions out there and they're all great. It is a pretty much <laughs> Every time straightforward push your luck game where you've got a big deck of cards and you can f you flip over the top card in the deck and you're doing it one at a time. And you can continue going until one of that same type shows up, and if it does, then you bust, okay? But you're trying to create the, the sets, and you're trying to uh, do it in such a way that it, you, there's kind of a shoot the moon element to it if you can pull it off. Uh, they have like three different power cards, so there's not a lot extra there. There's a pretty quick, simple push your luck game that goes well with large groups, and um, yeah, this is my favorite version of it, and I know a lot of people don't like it, but they're wrong. This is art. <laughs> this is art. All right, I'm adding this to the uh, Catchapalooza list. Yes! Okay. Why? What yes. do you mean? Like, just I've never this. played it. You've never played Circus Flocati. Well, I don't think I have. I can have... Uh, There's no way you've never played Circus Flocati. I can have Flo Tiffany Cotty. bring it down well, for a cruise. I don't remember it. 
Uh, don't we have it in a dice tower? Oh, if we have it in the library. Yeah, we you? have the, the, the one from Platy. Oh, nice. Yeah, okay. That's You've a, never that's, played that's a that cute game? Version. I don't... I don't know. Get now the I'm one with the fleas, Get man. The Let's hit them with the hard stuff. I could bring the fleas. Okay. I always bring the fleas, baby. Uh, my Quote, number 98. Please stop. <laughs> it's on the back of the box. I always bring the fleas, uh, baby. My number 98, Circus Flocati. My number 98 is an abstract strategy game that was 69 last time. So it's dropped quite a mm. bit. Uh, again, it's still in my top 100, so whatever. Uh, but this is one from the GIF series of games. This mm. is Czar. Uh, this is another one you haven't played, I think, Tom? I don't remember. Uh, this one, all these games, really, the entire series, are these sort of very elegant, um, clearly abstract, head-to-head -head games, like black versus white, pretty traditional. With then a few sort of core ideas that permeate all of them. The usual thing being sort of shrinking boards. The boards tend to get smaller as the game goes on, or some sort of play with space. In this one, what I like is um, there's sort of two things at odds here. You have three kinds of pieces, the ones with no, with nothing on them, they're blank. The ones with the central dot, and then the ones that look like a target, right? Like the, the, the dot and the circle around it. Those three things have varying powers at the beginning of the game, but those powers are going to change. If you run out of any one kind, you're done. You can eat an opponent's piece in this game as long as it's the same height or, or taller. Or you can just take one of your own pieces and put it on top of you, uh, one of your pieces, put it on top of your own piece and making that stronger. This, this, these are literally edible pieces. No. <laughs> no, you can't literally eat. They look Go delicious. Your crystal, uh, <laughs> they look latte. delicious. It's not, there's no latte so, left. It's yeah, just crystal. Yeah. So, um, <laughs> So you're doing this sort of dance back and forth between do I protect my pieces, do I go after you, do I make mine taller and really have a, a piece you can't possibly take on the table. But the more pieces I put under my own, the fewer of my pieces I have. So I'm making like one massive tower. It's so cool. It's quick, too. It's like the quickest one in the series of games. This one's like 20 minutes. Ooh. I'm, I'm embarrassed I haven't played any of these. You haven't played any of no, them? No, we should knock out if a couple. If they had fleas, would you be into them? Yes. We can make that happen. Okay. <laughs> All right. I have a guy. <laughs> a flea guy. I got a flea guy. Real you don't, cookies and the fleas. The less you ask, the Real better. Real cookies and fleas, man. Mm -hmm. The Canizia Renaissance. <laughs> okay. okay. All right. My number 98 is, uh, it's been on the list for seven years. It debuted at 16, and it's another one that's falling. Again, I don't play it that often. Yeah. And this is Rising Sun. But I still oh, really like it. I like yeah. it's still my favorite of this tri of trilogy. I think I don't know. Oh boy! Uh -oh. oh, spoiler alert! Yeah, I don't actually know. If Blood Rage made it on. Uh, oh, and Ankh isn't even in the even in no, consideration. No, no, no. Uh, Ankh is fine, but it's mm. not. But what? Ankh is the best one of them all. I like Rising Sun. I like the big monsters. I really love. I know that's you don't love it as much, but I love the combat. <laughs> I like the tiny bit of negotiation the game has, and yeah. I think it works well. With that odd number of players, um, and I also I, I just I like the theming. I like it's a big grandiose game. The reason it's not quite as high is again I just don't get it to the table it's that hard much. Hard to get to the table. But yeah. I do enjoy this one of that trilogy the best. So that's it's a big game that doesn't that isn't like difficult to play too. Right? Yeah, that's that is thing. that is one thing that I think is common amongst the trilogy is that the rules are pretty streamlined. Yeah. Honestly, yeah. so. All right, People's Choice 98 debuted six years ago at 98, then went as high as 75, but back down to 98, and that's because they they keep coming out with new versions of this game, and this is Gaia Project. So oh. this year, the uh, what was the Age of Innovation, um, uh, Terra Mystica Age of Innovation came out, right? Which is a funny name for the third one. <laughs> uh, that's true. Actually, it's the fourth one, technically, because they had Terra Mystica Baby Version or whatever that was called. Yeah. They had that? I mean, it's not called Baby Version. It's Baby no, no, First. I know, but they, they made that? Yeah. Yeah, so Terra Mystica was first. Gaia Project is second. It's in space. Almost everyone I meet says Gaia Project's better than Terra Mystica. And it's space. And yet, somehow I don't see it getting played all as much. The as reason why I think that, they, that a lot of people think this one is better, and, and this is just a, a guess, is that... It's heavier than Terra Mystica, and the people that like Terra Mystica like heavy games typically, right, right, and so right. this is even heavier. You know, that'd be my guess. I think it's all, well. There's a few other changes too. That the way you move on the boards a little bit yeah. easier, 
and it's a little bit more streamlined, actually. Oh, okay. I think in parts of it. Mm -hmm. And Terra Mystica had some perceived imbalances. I yeah. wouldn't know, but people right. would like bid on which race they were running. I was like, what? Okay. <laughs> But yeah, so Terra Nova, yeah, yeah. So yes. Gaia Project, your number ninety-eight. Hi, I'm Jamie from Stillmeyer Games, and I'm excited to hear number ninety-seven on the Dice Towers top one hundred games of all time. I hope it's Worm Span. Say Worm Span. I'm saying I'm like, okay, what can I switch to make this a Stonemeyer game? <laughs> um, my number ninety-seven is uh, down a bit. Uh, quite a bit for my last list. It's down 36 places uh, to 97. And I think that's because I, I've played a lot more cooperative games. This is a cooperative game that the game itself I think is great, but it's really the theme and the production that, that kind of gives it a little bit more uh, oomph on my list, and that is Rescue Polar Bears Data wow. und Temperature. Wow, this game I know, makes me happy and yeah. then also sad. It is, yeah, yeah. Eric Sum Sum Summerer, why was I going to call it? I was going to call it Golden the Summoner. Eric Summerer is a big fan of this game as well, I know. <laughs> um, so the idea in this game is that you are cooperatively trying to uh, keep the environment in such a way that these polar bears survive. I mean, I know it sounds dark, but the production is absolutely adorable, and the look of it is is cute. So I don't think that it, it generally doesn't feel, even if you lose, you know, it's it's not that devastating. But not it's got to, these little you, the ceramic, <laughs> it's got these little ceramic uh, polar bears, uh, papa bears, mama bears, and baby bears. Oh. And you are in these boats uh, going around and you are trying to, again, keep the temperature such that these ice uh, pieces aren't melting, which are tiles. And uh, you've got little a little bit of uh, player powers with your boats. You know, every boat works a little bit differently. Um, it's a tough game. Uh, it's not hard to learn uh, or teach, but it's hard to win. It really is too stinking hard. It is a little hard. Um, yeah, maybe for the theme it's too hard, yeah, if that, that makes sense. That, that, that's, yeah, that is one of the things that, that, that's kind of brought it down a bit. But it's still grasping onto the iceberg with a oh few goodness, claws. Like, right. ah! This game is... Is still got the nose above the water. Oh, jeez. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Polar bears can, you know. Swim. You know what? That actually makes me want to play this less. <laughs> and it's, oh, I'm not kidding because yeah. I don't mind when you're playing some cooperative games. Like, oh, how does land just get right, destroyed? Right. It's kind of like when you see a disaster movie and a whole c continent is blown up and you're yeah. like, oh, that's cool. <laughs> right? But, but, but it's like so far off. But you zoom in right, right, and right. one little cat, kitten, and you're like, no. Yeah, but yeah. To be fair... I, if I'm not mistaken, as soon as one polar bear perishes, the game is immediately over. I believe that's correct. So you you will not see it happen in the game. No. Oh, okay. They're rescued. Like, as they they're, fall you're, in, yeah, they're you're, rescued. You can only rescue so many. Mm -hmm. And as soon as you cannot rescue one, bam, you've lost the game. You've lost, yeah. So it's not like you're a polar bear yeah, it's, murderer, it's is not, what I'm saying. Yeah, you're not, not like, like a serial polar killer. bears are dropping left and right. Oh, no! <laughs> yeah. Thanks. Thanks for the super chat. Ty mm -hmm. from Montana. Same. My favorite state. They got a lot of polar bears out there. My number 97 is Polar Bear Massacre. Oh, my word. <laughs> wow. My number 97 Spencer is Spencer. a... Spencer. Go ahead. Uh, thank you, Spencer. <laughs> this is number 100. <laughs> my number 97 is a deck building game with a bunch of expansions, compatible expansions. Um, a master set in which I keep it all now. Oh, I know this what this is. This is Dale of Merchants. I did not know what this is. What did you think I was thinking of? I was, no, because it'll be much higher on your list. I don't want to say it. I do know you like deck this one. Deck building with a master set, and I love it, and it's higher? Maybe it's not deck building. I thought it has a little bit of deck building in it, I but it could be wrong. All right, well, don't crazy. you worry You're about it. You like this world, too, right? <laughs> I do like this world. I, do too. I like this publisher stuff. Snowdale do Designs, I think it is. Yes. <clears throat> I like their stuff. I like this. I like the Lands of Galzir. I like the the new one. I was really heeing and hawing on backing that second edition of the one you really like. Yeah, the Donna Peace I ended up Makers. not backing it, but, you know, it'll come through. Mm -hmm. um, but, yeah, I do like this one. This is a pretty breezy deck-building game, and I love that it does, well, a few things. I like that the, when the game, en the game ends when somebody builds eight stalls, which is a... It's sort of a way to thin your deck, but also to have you need to have the necessary cards to do that. As soon as anybody does that and builds the eighth stall, market stall, 
game's over. There's no scoring. Mm -hmm. There's no, you know, I, I love that. I like some games. You know, every now and then it's a refreshing thing. Like a to race, be like, basically. And you win. Boom. Yeah. We're yeah. done. Yeah. Yep. And then the amount of content in this is ridiculous. You put together these character decks when you want to play, and you want to have a little bit of a meaner game, then put in the lizards or whatever. You Can wanna... you buy all of them together in one? No. Um, so there's Dale of Merchants 1, 2, and 3, and then whatever the big box is called. Uh, I thought I 3 know. was in the big box. That's a different game. No, so this is technically, there are four ah, sets. Ah, okay, okay, okay. They all do fit in there. Um, it's a hefty box at that point, mm -hmm. but it has tremendous replayability. So, my 97, Dale of Merchants, the whole shebang. Mm. All right, my number 97 is not a co-op game. It's the farthest thing from it. It was uh -oh. 79 last year. Mm. Shitty fight. This is Good Critters. Oh, yeah. Now, this ah. is a Dice Tower Essential, which I picked the games. I like them a lot. And this game has gone nowhere. <laughs> no one plays it, unfortunately. Yeah. But I really love this game. The whole idea of basically you sit there and you have money, and one person splits the money between everyone else, and then everyone else votes on whether they like that or not. Um, agree with that decision or not. And if, they, if you get enough no votes... You're kicked out of the mm. dividing the money, and now someone else divides the money. It's a simple game. It's really fun. It's definitely vicious, but vicious in a very small, sure. like everyone every turn, like, oh, sure, Mike yeah, got nothing. Yeah. Oh. Eventually, some people get Mike money because they don't want to keep giving it to the guy who's winning. Right, right. That kind of self-balances there. Yeah. Oh, there we are. So uh, there we go. That's my number 97, Good Critters, a small little card game. I really enjoy it. Your number 97 has mm. been on your list for six years. It debuted at 55. In fact, last year it was 92. So it's just going down a bit. Very popular. Build your own fantasy character game. That's Role Player. Oh, wow. Yeah, this is still popular. Yeah, and it's funny <laughs> to me that I'm still amused by the fact that Role Player has spawned a universe. I know. There's like... Six games set in it now. Would you would you think though that right now the most popular game in this universe is Cartographers? Yes, I think it is. Cartographers, mm. which may or may not show up on the People's okay. Choice. I don't remember where it ended up. Okay. Um, Cartographers is very popular. It's definitely it's a it's a cheaper price point, but it's also one of the more well received roll and write games. It is interactive yeah. roll and writes. Too. Yes, this one is fun though for a lot of people because a it's going to attract people who want to build a fancy character, but even if that doesn't. Yeah. It's a nice dice placement game. There's right. a lot of choices. It doesn't overstay its welcome. It has some really good expansions. Yeah. Yeah, too. where you can actually use the character to fight against somebody. That's the, yeah, that's the I first think, expansion. I think yeah. most people like it who have played it with the expansion like right. it with the expansion better. Yeah. It's it's a neat idea because for some people, their favorite part of D&D &D is creating Roll their character. That character right? Yeah. So, neat idea. No, this is a good one. Role player. Hello. Dave Beck here of Papers and Games. Here's the number 96. Slangeva. Dave, I raise my crystal latte to you. Cheers, sir. He let me know that that was not a alcoholic drink mm. because it's a family-friendly show. Ah. Even though we're about to see what the game itself is about. Um, he didn't hear about that whole polar bear discussion if he thought this was <laughs> no, 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 no. He would have... He would have spiked that drink. Mm -hmm. if Those polar bears had drunk more. Than That's true. Five. That's correct. Mm -hmm. they, yeah, they did. They wouldn't care. You know, they'd be they'd be sliding off those icebergs. <laughs> All right. All right. My number 96 is new to my list, but it wasn't uh, a game from this year. It was from last year. It's a solo game, solo only game, and nobody's playing this or talking about it. Good critters. No. My number 96 is Batman: The Dark Knight Returns. This oh. is such a good solo game. Now you can, they, they do have a way you can play it two players. Uh, you know, there there is a, a variant for two players, but I have only played this game solo, and uh, I, I think that's the only way I particularly would want to play it. This has so many neat things going for it that I don't know why it's not getting more attention, other than maybe it's too big of a box. It's a big, expensive solo game. Yeah. That's a hard sell. But it's so good. Um, and get the one without minis if you want it a little cheaper. Then it's, then it's a perfectly reasonable price. But the idea behind this is that this is following the storyline of the Frank Miller graphic novel of The Dark Knight Returns. Which okay, is fantastic. It's an incredible storyline. It's older Batman, kind of worn out Batman, and, and coming back for one kind of, you know... 
you know, I'm too old for this. I, they pulled me back in for one more thing kind of a thing, right? Yes, but acting like an old Batman. Act too. like an old it's Batman, really too. Good. Yeah. Uh, the board is a dry erase, and that's only because there's movement involved, and you can add lo you can add new pathways to different areas. You can, you know, kind of cross that's them cool. out. But the part of this game I like the most is that in a lot of times when you have event decks, right, in, in, in cooperative or solo games, mm -hmm. you have no idea what's in that event deck. Or, mm -hmm. you know what I mean? And in this one, you're drafting your cards and the event card. So the cards are multi-use, uh, so if you have it as a card, for you, it has a particular power. Or if, it, if you put it as an event card, it has some bad thing you have to deal with. But you know what bad things you're putting in for that round. That's interesting. And then you shuffle them, but you don't know what order they're coming out. But you know what you have to deal with. And that is such a smart design decision. Mm. Uh, campaign. You can play it as standalone. Listen to that, publisher! Yeah, you can play it as standalone mm -hmm. uh, adventures as well. Just a really, really good game that I, I think... If more people played it, it would get a little bit more buzz. Okay, here we um, go. Putting it on the list. It's so good. Batman, Batman. The Dark Knight Returns. Dark My Knight number 96. Returns. Mm -hmm. All right, now I have two things. Batman Dark oh, Knight Returns. Oh, it does have Batarang <laughs> dice, too. <laughs> As Richard said, yeah, it has D6 <laughs> Batarang dice, too. There we go. Got it. Mike, you're teaching me a lot. Batman Dark Knight Returns. Sketchers Go Walk. There you go. I'm all over this list. Crystal Latte. It's good. That's not real. <laughs> <laughs> My number 96 is a party game. One of my Ooh. favorite party games, one of the simplest party games out there, which I think many party games, more party games, I should say, would benefit from. This is Just One. This just is... One is a fun, simple, non-full of itself. It's mm. like a non-snooty party game. What was this last year? Did it move up? I don't think it was on my list I was last say, this year. This one's getting real it. close to getting on my list. Yeah. This is great. This is just fun, and it's... it's Just one, too. It's so easy to make this work well, or to, to have it go over well. It's not a lot of effort there, you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. You can have people jump in and drop out yes. anywhere you want to. Who cares? It does spectators not matter. Spectators can play, basically. You can have spectators. You can have that sort of, like... Why you can play a round by walking by the table. <laughs> you could do that. I mean, like, it's kind of wild. It's if very you true. walk by a table and you look at the words, assuming you know how the game works, you can just look at all the clues and be like, oh, "This is what I would guess." And yeah. Then wait and see. Yep. If you did right, like you mm -hmm. can, you know, this is the most drop in, drop out, fun, silly thing ever. Um, it doesn't have that whole like a lot of tension. A lot of things are on the line. Like, in, right, you know. Right. Uh, if you play code names, I always feel like... Ten words or less. Or, I can mess yeah, this yeah. up a lot. You mm -hmm. know what I mean? It's a big part, one one round. So, yeah, I think Just One is a wonderful trick-taking... Um, trick-taking. It's a wonderful <laughs> party game. You're ruining everything. You are. It's, I, 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 I wish the Renaissance would just stop. <laughs> <laughs> well, the Reformation's coming. <laughs> Thank you. Finally. Keep waiting. You never I'm ready know. for the Dark Ages uh, again. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Let's bring back the fleas. All right. My number 96 is brand new to the list, and happily it is a one-shot for the most part, and that is Freelancers. Really mm, enjoy the so stories good. in this game. It's so funny. The writing is good. Now, I wonder, probably by the end of next year, I'll have played everything in this, but I played the same scenario multiple times and enjoyed it. Yeah. So, but... Or maybe they'll add more too. Who knows? Maybe, yeah. I don't know how well this one is doing for Plaid Hat, uh, but I, to, it, this did knock the other one off. Forgotten Waters. I like Forgotten Waters, but it just got knocked off because, even though I do like the pirate theme better than straight, weird, well, this is weird fantasy, apocalyptic yeah. fantasy. Mm -hmm. The writing in this one is just so on point, and just all the crazy things that can happen. I'm just laughing the whole game, yeah. and having, but also having a fun adventure too. Yeah, it's almost. A dungeon masterless game. I mean, that's what it is, really, yeah. in a sense. But and with a few die rolls and stuff, it's a lot of fun. Like an RPG, you mean? Dungeon yeah. masterless RPG, or yeah, sorry, yeah, yeah. Campaign, like being in a yeah. campaign without a dungeon master, yeah. and the whole thing is doing great voices and acting for you, telling you a great story. It really it, it, it excels at that. Yeah, I, this is not on my list. I need to. I haven't played enough of it, mm. but that little bit I did play it was like, oh my gosh, yes. So funny. I haven't played it at all, but. Being watching you guys play it live, I almost felt like I played it. You know yeah, what I mean? That's true, yeah. yeah. 
All right, the People's Choice, your number 96, was also 96 last year when it Whoa. debuted. And it is the most complex roll and write game on the market. And that is Hadrian's Wall. Yes. Oh, I we're going to say uh, Twilight, Twilight Imperial. Or Inscription. Twilight Inscription. Actually, Hadrian's Wall, I think, is more complex. I think it's it is. It's a smaller block, mm -hmm. but there is a really? lot going on in those yeah. two pages yes. there. It's a, it's a tough game to teach. I could teach Twilight Inscription way faster than Hadrian's Wall. It, it, I agree. Um, yeah, I, I, I agree with you. But it's a, it, it's a solid game. For me, it's still in that realm of I'm just playing... And I hope I did well. Yeah. <laughs> um, you know, you're kind of like, if I do this, I get this. And if I do that, I do this, I do that. And you're doing all that. I don't want to, at the end of it, go, all right, undo that chain. Or mm -hmm. I just do yeah, the no, chain no, and I have like, a good time. Yeah. See what happens. I agree. So, yeah. I'm actually surprised this is this high out of people's choice. I, I am too, yes. It's a, it's a good one. But it's heavy. All right. We're halfway through the first 10. Woo! One, five percent. <laughs> yeah! 18 years of career. Almost 60 games illustrated, and finally, I'm in, I've done it. I'm a number. I'm a number in the top 100 of all time of the Dice Tower. I'm the number 95. <laughs> That's fantastic, man. You got some heavy hitters in the first 10. I love that guy. I love that guy. So he is, talented. He is so fun. He has, has great art, Piero. He did one of our uh, playmats. Yeah, he did. So not this year. Yeah, previous yeah, years. Yeah, previous years, yeah. Yeah. He's drawing on it in the, in the background. Oh, that's cool. Very All right. Nice. My number 95 is new to my list. And it is a style of game that I don't own many of because I had had bad experience with these types of games before. My number 95 is Veiled Fate. Oh, very um, nice. So this is a wow. yeah a hidden identity game where you are playing as um, gods and you are kind of controlling one of these demigods. Demigods are kind of the characters that are there on the board. And I like this one so much because A, the system is so clean. It's so easy to understand. Mm. And it's not, the reason why I've bounced off a lot of these games is A, I'm worried I'm going to break the game somehow. Oh, because you're so good at no, games. No, 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 no. In the opposite, <laughs> in the opposite sense. Like I'm going to do something. Mike Delicio's <laughs> coming through here with his go walks and his crystal uh -huh. lattes. It's exactly the opposite. It's because I'm afraid I'm going to do something stupid that breaks the game and ruins it for everybody else. Mm -hmm. That's my thing. But this one is so clean, you know, okay. I've got this one, but the whole idea is, of course, in these types of games, you don't want to let the other people know too early which demigod you're pulling for, right? right? Um, but there is going to be that tipping point where you're like, okay, here's where I make my big play, and I don't care if they know. I'm going to try to get it to, to that, I think it's a 12-point threshold uh, reputation. Um, and, and it's just a neat game where you are basically playing... Feather cards, or what are the black cards? I can't remember. The white cards and the black cards, basically. Yeah. And each card is going to have a result, depending upon if there's a majority of white or black. And yeah, so I like that a lot. It's, it's just a really simple rule set. It plays well at high player counts. Um, probably would not play this at less than four for oh, myself. Sure, Maybe yeah, even five. Have, game, have you right? played the team variant? The team variant is amazing. It's really good. Yes. I think that's the only way I've played. I played this once. Mm -hmm. And you played the I team think it variant. it was team yes. variant. Yeah. I, I really, would not pick this for either one of you to like. Yeah, I yeah, love Yeah, we it. both like it. I like it. I just haven't played it enough to be like, it's in my top 100. But I thought it was a very good game. And I played an eight-player team variant of it this year. Yeah. So, well, 2023. There you go. Um, so, yeah. it, it, it that like a good con game, then. Yes. Yeah, that solidified it for my list. Uh, it, it was such a great experience. And, and I think maybe only one other person had played the game in that eight-player game. Wow. It went over really well. Good. All right, my number 95. This, this one I literally looked down when we sat down uh, earlier today here and thought, wait a second, how did this crawl up here? Because it's another... <laughs> game from uh, the GIF series of games, oh. another abstract game, that I always considered like my third. There's one that's coming up that's always like the yeah, best, yeah. then Czar, then Devon. 
Oh. Well, apparently Devon is putting out some big moves because it's a little bit higher than Czar on my list. Mm, Devon is good. Devon is very good. Um, this one has a couple of really interesting ideas that I haven't seen in any other abstract games, actually. Whereas the rest of the, of the games, I think, in the series, all are sort of really good mixtures of flavors that exist elsewhere. This has, in my opinion, the one true original flavor in the entire series, and that is there are three. You have black discs, uh, white discs, the two players. You're stacking. You can cover up your opponent and eliminate them. You want to have the biggest stacks at the end. Great, you know. There's three red discs. If you are ever not connected to a red disc, that pile, anything not connected to a red disc, is immediately eliminated. They are the life force of the game. You have to be touching one of those, whether it's within a stack or it's, you know, connected. If you separate that, boom, that's gone. So you can jump right on it and that stack will always be alive. It has a life force within it. Um, and you can make some nasty moves in the game where you move one piece. And that half connects the board a, is gone. Like, wow. Yeah, just like that piece disconnects this from this, and this is all like, whoop, done, gone. Wow. It's wild stuff. Um, I really like this game. I think if you are curious about this series, there's Yinch's one we haven't talked about, which is a very simple introductory one. But it's kind of like... Uh, it's, it's sort of a more traditional abstract game. If you want to try the series and you want to see, like, okay, what's the big deal? Why is it weird? Why is it renowned? Try this one. And I think this one will give you a feeling of, like, oh, this is different. Hmm. Um, My 95, Devon, a different abstract strategy game. Well. All right, oh, my yes. number 95 <laughs> was... Uh, 66 last year, debuted last year. It's not a new game, but there was a new version of a game last year. And I still haven't played the expansion for this game, hmm. and that is Iki. Oh, and this is a worker yeah. movement game, a kind of a giant rondelle, really. That's what it is, yeah. Uh, where you're moving around this village and then buying different things, going to different shops. And every game of this plays out so uniquely different because just how things are put into those stores. You own the shopkeepers. You're trying to get the shopkeepers to have experience so they can get better and better until they retire, which means you can't use them anymore, but then they're worth points and stuff. There's just a lot of really good decisions in this game, and you can play a different way each time. I like it. It's, it's a smaller game than the picture makes you believe, but mm. at the same time, it's bigger than... Once you learn the rules, you're like, wow, there is a lot of different things I can do. Sure. Also, it's a gorgeous little production with a very good board that walks you through all the steps. Ooh, I, like I always like that. Yeah, I you're really right. like Iki. You're like, oh, I wonder what round this happens. It's on the round tracker. Yeah. Oh, I wonder what order we do things are. It's printed right there on the board as you move the piece. You'll, cool. Yeah, you'll like hear that. us kind of sometimes use, well, I, I, I can speak for myself, UI, like the user experience or interface. That's what I'm usually talking about is when crucial information is right there in front yeah. of you. You yeah, don't yeah, have yeah. to refer to something. All right. Your choice, your number, what do we have, number 95, debuted in 2011 when this first started at 5. Oh, whoa. Last year it was 141 and it had fallen off the list. Woo. But it's back at 95 and this is one of the most popular games in the world. A single word like share. It used to be more than one word. Now it's just Catan. Ah, yes. So debuted at 5. Back in 2011, you're saying, like, when this list... Yeah, it was 5, didn't... 7, 12, 26, 21, 35, 59, 74, 83, 71, 89, 141, and now back 95. Yeah, interesting. Very well, just, interesting. It, it, just the, it, there's not a lot of... There's actually not a lot of waffling on the people's choice. This is, this is one of the bigger changes, mm -hmm. but I can see this. I mean, this one is still being learned by new people. Sure. And there's new listeners at the Dice Stars. Yep. And it's definitely one of those games now where it's kind of easy to be like, well, psh, katan. and I, I don't like it nearly as much as I used to, easily. Sure, agreed. But it's so easy for people to play and get into. Yeah. Yep, it's the one that got me in the hobby. Always hold a special place in my heart. So, that's your number 95, Catan. No, clearly it says to roll the dice first. Oh, hey folks, Lee and I are just trying to learn this game. I know you're watching the top 100, and the next one up is number 94. All right, let's get back to this. No, see right here it says. 
Aww. See, Mark has clearly learned where his bread gets buttered. Now it's <laughs> now it's like, hi, I'm Alita, and I'm Mark. You know, uh, yeah. <laughs> Alita. Look, I'm sorry, Mark. She's stealing your shine. Let's just be honest. Mm -hmm. There's a star. The star is born, and mm -hmm. her name is Alita. I hope it's a her. Also, it's ninety four. It is 94. My number 94 is a game that uh, moved up two spots. It always seems to hover around the bottom of my top 100 list. And I, 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 I'm, I always think, well, maybe this is going to fall. Maybe, you know, the shine is worn off. But then I'll play it. And I'm like, no, I really like this game. My number 94 is Master of Respect. And I have to give, <laughs> uh, I have to give my respect to uh, Mr. Tom Vassell, who... Uh, convinced me to try this one through your review. It's not hard to get Mike to try a small game. But from. this was before I was even into, you know, oh, kind of all this stuff. Uh, yeah, it's a Hobby Japan like game, start. but uh, it wasn't one I had to import, I don't think. Well, maybe I did. Anyway. Also, the theme is really it's good It's great. In this game, you're, right? You are running a dojo. All right, each player is running a dojo, and what you're trying to do is you're trying to attract, well, no, you're not attracting them. Students are coming to your dojo, mm -hmm. and you're training them. To, to win a tournament. So basically the game is broken into two parts. One, where you are getting these uh, students in your dojo, you're training them, and then you are putting them out there to fight. But first you send them out to do chores. You do send them out to do chores first. Yeah, but right. that makes sense. Exactly. Everybody who's ever um, watched the movie knows that. Yeah, 100%. On. Yep. And then, uh, then once you've trained them, you're putting them out there to fight in a, in a tournament, right, with other students that are out there and if they win that's great but then you don't have access to them in the next round so right right yeah it's just a really really small game but it's a lot of fun and you're right the theme is is just so good um, that it, it charms me my number 94 is master of respect my number 94 is one of the slowest burns i think for me i've got a few coming up higher on the list um but this one is, you remember when I was talking about witchcraft and how I like my solitaire games small and punchy? Mm -hmm. This is a solo game that is not small. Okay. This is a big solitaire game mm. that I tried originally when it came out. <gasps> and I thought it was like, all right, it's not bad. I kept at it. It's kind of a, a tough game. Anyway, it made it on my top 100 this year. I think I know it. What do you think it is? I think your number 94 is Nemo's War. Nemo's War. Woo! Second edition. They huh. came out with a really nice edition of this, uh, which helped it's uh, beautiful, either yeah. last year or the year before, uh, which was they did a new expansion and then like a really nice box that had the extra content and all the goodies. This is a an Amerith trashy, very thematic period piece. Yeah. Story, like some sort of, you know, story driven, but it's not really like a a cohesive tale it's telling. Mm -hmm. This is a game that by all means and by every account I shouldn't like. It's not, you know... <laughs> it's a dice chucker. It's a dice chucking old school long game. Like a war game. Yeah, I watch you too. play this online and you're just like, roll dice, roll dice, you're, roll you're dice. Constantly you constantly right. That's dice. what it is. Um, but I like living in this world yeah. for an hour and a half. I really do. I love the, the usage of the words. <laughs> like, oh, you collect... You you go around as Nemo on your your Nautilus and you sink ships that are problematic and then you account for their tonnage, mm -hmm. how big the ship is that you sank and you put it towards different things right. and you level up and you get new abilities for your vehicle and the guys spawn. You might be avoiding combat if you do too much combat. The powers of the world turn their sights on you. Mm -hmm. There's all this stuff. It's just. Yeah. It's an interesting, immersive kind of game that if I'm feeling old school, I'm like, you know, I don't, I don't want to play one of these newfangled <laughs> Euro games with all of their perfectly balanced everything. Right. I'm bringing out Nemo's War. That's right. And if you fail on a die roll, you just sacrifice your crew. You I just, do. I just restart the game. Uh, I think, you know, Tool did the new thing. It looks beautiful. Yeah, he's done. Yeah, everything second edition yeah. has been him, and it's, it's a good looking game. So, yeah, I like it. It's maybe a weird, uh, definitely not a game for everybody, mm -hmm. but I uh, enjoy it a lot. 94. All right, my number 94 has been on the list for eight years. It, nine years ago, it was 105, but then it moved to jumped all over the place. It was 76 last year, but still somewhere in the same area. This is one of my favorite bag building games, and that is New Orleans. 
or just, I'm sorry, Orleans. <laughs> I don't know why I said New. This is Po Boy. I got all. I got all <laughs> <laughs> New Orleans is a very different one. Yeah, you're building sandwiches. <laughs> That's a game. Ooh, Po Boy. Oh, now I'm hungry. Great. More deck building games need that food as a theme. I'm telling you, it works. Like I'm playing a salad. Yeah, well, you could do a sandwich one easily, right? You're just getting I more ingredients so, right? and just. Yes, yes. Anyhow, this game still charms me. I really like it. It's funny that this picture itself that we're showing you here is of the, the least deluxe version of this game yeah, you can get. That's but true. I like the deluxified ones or the upgraded. There's so many different ways to upgrade them. Yeah. But I like pulling stuff from a bag as a mechanism. I like. I like deck builders sure. pulling the bag. But then Orleans says there's a big, chunky Euro game behind that, which I find to be really, really fun. Yeah. I played the co-op version of this only. Yeah, I've played them both. I like that. Mm -hmm. That was good. Your number 94 was 89 last year and 132 the year before that. Mm -hmm. And we're moving into deduction. Mm -hmm. This is the search for Planet X. Oh, my. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I know yes. people like that one. Mm -hmm. um, just a very popular... It's one of the most popular deduction games come out in a long time. I, I, it's early, but I think this one's gonna gonna stay more popular than the, the Lost Species. Yeah, over the, over the I, path I of time. I think so too. I think so. Too. I think Species is a slightly better game. I yeah. really do. Right. But there's just something. First of all, it's a great cover. It is. But it just there's something about that whole. Where's Planet X? Right. Yeah. No, it's great. Like if if you came to me and said I discovered this weird new little offshoot species, and I would be very impressed. And Mike says I found a new planet. I'd be like, I'll talk to you later. <laughs> that's like, right. Yeah. Tell me more about this planet. No. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. No. That's fair. I would expect you not to talk to me. <laughs> well, it was. I all demanded. Point. In fact, <laughs> it was all point. starting now. Up to that point, anyway. I just wanted to be clear. <laughs> but anyway, so if you like the, if you like really. Involved deduction games that are crunchy with an app. Also, this has an yes, app. This is app yeah. driven, and you it does a fantastic job. You have to mention that. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you need not them. apply if you don't own a smartphone. No, I think you could do it. You just need a friend with a smart. No, you need your own, right? You need a smartphone. You need your own. Yeah. yeah. You must have a smart. Don't come to me with your razor phones. No, it's not happening. Sidekicks? No. What about blackberries? Blackberry's good. <laughs> okay, let's move on. <laughs> Hi everybody, it's Sharon with Dice Tower East, and I hope you're enjoying this top 100 countdown with Tom, Mike, and Z. And up next, it's number 93. She printed that. Sharon rocking it with the printer. Yeah. I'm trying Did to figure out where that? she was. I, well, I was, I was wondering too. Was, was she... that the Miami Zoo? Could That's it? at the, 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 the Butterfly Museum. Oh, the butterfly, was it? The butterfly, like... Nakatomi Plaza place, huh? <laughs> Nakatomi Plaza. Plaza. That's a different. Uh, I, I think I don't she know. was in Dubai when she filmed that, right? Dubai? What is going on? <laughs> I don't actually know. Where I'm that just was. trying to think of some very Sharon's exotic. in the comments. Oh, Sharon, Sharon, where were you? Where were you? We demand to know. <laughs> uh, Reveal your Garden. whereabouts. Flamingo Gardens. Gardens. Flamingo Gardens. Thank you. Okay. All right. Thank you. All right. What's your 93? Uh, where were you on the? Okay, my number 93 <laughs> is uh, down 29, still holding on. Oh, and by the way, before you go. Sharon Matt, if you don't know, is Rex Dice Tower East. Yes. Which you should also come to this July. It's going to be amazing. That's that right. is. That's right. Continue. Correct. My number 93 is part of the trilogy, so it's a crossover of a trilogy, but a different game in that trilogy. My number 93 is Blood Rage. It's still uh, the one that is most likely to get played of the three. Uh, I will say I now don't own any of the three anymore. Mm -hmm. But Wait, the, you don't own your top 100 games? Yes, there's several of my top 100 games I don't own. But you own more than 100 games. Yes. So confusing. I, it, I, I understand, actually. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but we'll never let you live don't it down. No, no, no. Up the hook that yeah, easy. look, it's size, size has a lot to do with the games that are no longer in there. Anyway, Blood Rage is the game that I feel like I can most easily just sit down and play and mm -hmm. teach, right? Rising Sun would be a bear. Ankh would be a bear. I'd have to like kind of relearn things. Blood Rage is at heart a drafting game. Yeah, you've got these huge impressive minis. Yeah, you've got this board and battling. But this is really all about the draft, right? Three ages, three drafting cycles. That's the game. Right. Um, and it is one that has some flaws. I think that, that it, it's a game where if certain people know the cards very well and other people don't know the cards very well, they're going to get destroyed. This can have huge point uh, spreads in it, right? Um, but it's still so 
fundamentally satisfying when you can pull off something really well. And there's something satisfying about throwing your, you know, coming in with a big play in Yggdrasil or something along those lines. Um, and it has nostalgia for me too because I remember one, I didn't back it on Kickstarter and I went to the Gen Con that year, didn't know it was even going to be there. And I bought it, and Eric Lang signed it, and I was like, oh, I went home, and I felt like I had this grail. Yeah, yeah, you know? yeah that's cool. So, Blood Rage still has a lot of, uh, holds a special place for me. My number 93. My number 93 was 37 last year. Um, but I can see why it fell this much. It's a game that, for me, holds a lot of nostalgia. And I haven't played it in a while. It's mm. cause, because it's... Liar's Dice, that's why I haven't played ah. it. Because who's playing Liar's Dice with me? Anyway, I call it Bluff because uh, you that's stopped, a... You stopped lying is what it is. I, I no longer lie. I'll play Bluff, this with you right my now. number 93, is happens to be the version I have. Um, I really like this one. I played it a bunch through college. I enjoy how simple and straightforward it is. I enjoy the boisterous nature of the game. Um... It's still in my top 100. I do really still have incredibly fond, you know, feelings about look, it. Look how smooth, milky, and supple your hands were in college. Z. Yeah, man. Wow. Man, look at that. Look at me. You've look at really me aged. Look at your hands I've now. Aged terribly, Oof. especially my feet. <laughs> <laughs> well, Chris says if we get 500 likes in the video, you'll untie your shoelace. Well, you know, um, I'm trying to prime the pump. <laughs> Save it for the Kickstarter. My number 93. <laughs> Stretch goal. All right. Bluff. <laughs> I'll play Liar's Dice with you right now. My number 93. I'll still play this game. I love it. Mm -hmm. My number 93 has been on the list for 10 years. Uh, <laughs> went as high as 12. It is my favorite in the Command and Colors series, mm. and that is Battlelore 2nd Edition, yeah. which I was looking through some... I think it was the retreat pictures or something, and I saw Roy had played a, mm. uh, a an epic version of it. And I was like, I, I need to do that. Um, yeah, this is this is the game I always wanted, where you had monsters and stuff fighting other monsters and things on the board, and it felt like they were actually being monsters and not just I don't know a guy. I don't know. They just they have different feels and looks to them. We have a really nice set too that's painted and everything. Mm. It's 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 a really fun game to play. So. Battle Lore, second edition. Very, very clear on that one. Um, your number 93 was 101 last year and 110 the year before that, so it's coming back. Oh. It debuted in 2016 at 93, so it's been oh. all over the place. It won the Kenner Spiel somewhere along the line here, and that would be Istanbul. Okay. And you know what? I When I go to conventions... I see this one getting played. It Not all the time, but I'll go, played. oh, there's people playing Istanbul. Istanbul is a, a rock solid it's Euro game. Right. It's right. You're exactly right. You know what I mean? Yeah. This is this one is no flash in the pan. Yeah, no, this is no. Good stuff. This could be considered a modern classic. I like Istanbul a lot. Yeah. Uh, I haven't too. played it in a while, you know, but, but, and I haven't played with anything beyond the first expansion either. I have not played the first expansion. I think I've only played the second one. Oh, okay. Yeah, I I one one of those games I should just uh, get a big box of at this point. I think. Do they have? They have one now, right? They did. Yeah, yeah. Okay. I like. I like it. It's, I really like it. Yeah, it's great. I, right. I really like it. <laughs> if someone were to get me the big box, that's I would certainly. <laughs> Christmas is not. It's no, a that's long not, way that's away. That's not what I mean. I was mm -hmm. referring to my list. Oh. Oh. That's why I don't play the Search for Planet X with these guys. Maybe I like. All right. It. Maybe. <laughs> Number 93 is Istanbul for y'all. Like <laughs> the year was 92. Michael Jackson was dominating the charts and looping Louis... W What's that? Uh, are you sure? Just, just say 92? All right. Here's number 92. <laughs> was Michael Jackson dominating in 92? Probably. I, I wish they didn't stop him. I kind of wanted to get you relive 92 some more. I know. Was, 92, was, man. That, that was good stuff. You realize how long ago 92 was now? It's was sad. 22 years. Year. This would be one of those things where it's like, we're closer to 2045 right now than we are to 1992. I don't think that's true with math and everything. But That was pretty good math, Mike. We are. We are definitely closer. Good job. 
We're also closer to the next year than we are to the late 1800s. <laughs> <laughs> no, but he was actually pretty good. I didn't even know. Mine. mine was also correct. I Technically, feel, mine was more correct. I, I feel yeah. proud Thanks. for Thanks. my uh, accidental intelligence. All right. That's also the name of my second album, Accidental Intelligence. My number 92 is uh, part of a trilogy, and it is uh, the lowest uh, ranking of the trilogy. A little bit of spoilers here. My number 92 is Viscounts of the West no, Kingdom. No, oh, I would. Come on. I can't. Sorry, folks. Come Mike's. On. <laughs> Like has so many games from this series on his top 100. No, it's going to get boring, but no, they're no. good. That'd be like me somehow hinting that Istanbul is on my list. Correct. When you say these Correct. things, I don't like it. Yeah, uh, Vi Viscounts, you know, even being my least favorite of the, of the West Kingdom trilogy is really, that has more to do with how much the other two are just incredible to me. Right. Viscounts is still a spectacular game. Um, the, the little central castle mechanism, I think, is very smart. This one has, this one feels the most different to me among the three games. And, and I think that's why some people bounce off of it. Because you mean different from other games? Because it's, I think all three feel very different. Paladins and, and Architects aren't, don't feel even remotely similar. They don't, but this, this one, yeah, this feels different from, those are more classic Euro style games. This one is a little bit more odd with the movement elements and, and the way that the, the, the card system works is just, it's quirkier than those other games. Those other games are pretty straightforward, right? Okay. One much heavier than the other, but they're pretty straightforward. Viscounts is not. That, that castle thing is weird. Right, it's just a weird system, and the way that you, like I said, mm. the way you use your cards, which you didn't like, I think it's great. Um, the positioning of your piece with those cards, it's just weird, right? It's a weird game. It's not as easy to explain because of it. It's not as easy to teach. I guess that's why it's not even close to my top one. I think it's fine. I just like the other two way better. Well, I do too, but it's still in my top 100. Ixnay on the spoiling your. Oh list. wait, how did you do the whole Istanbul thing? I really like the other ones. Wink. There you go. There we go. Yeah, except when I wink at the camera, it doesn't melt in passion. Well, I'm okay. sorry. Look, accidental charisma. What am I going to do? <laughs> My number 92. Turn it off. <laughs> is Mike. Okay, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Turn it back on, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> <It's all player. laughs> all right. My number 92 is a racing game. Uh, that gets basically no love anymore because there are newer, brighter, shinier racing games. I still think this game is fire. But it's not heat. Oh, what did you say? <laughs> Come on! Come on! I was so it's such a <laughs> In fact, it's very cold. Mm. Oh, Snow Tales. Okay. Oh my word. Snow Tails is my 92. <laughs> uh, you I need mean, to work on your transitions. No, no, you how dare you, okay? Mm. Um I really like this when you have a team of, of uh, doggies <laughs> pulling your sled. You are controlling not just the strength, but also the direction in which they are pulling and therefore drifting. So you're, you're, you'll be drifting throughout the corners. You build the map when you set up the game however you want to. It's got a really neat system of control and, and sort of the mechanically the way you are racing is really clever. But mm. simple, straightforward, you know. I really like this one a lot. It just doesn't, I don't think anybody, it's, it's sort of forgotten a little bit. Maybe it needs a new edition. I don't know what it is. I was just going to say, I think this game would do much better if you just replace the dogs. Follow me here. Yeah. Cartoon ducks. What? Pulling a sled. What? Call it ducktails. Woo-wee. But. That was it, John. It was all for a stupid joke. That was a really bad Ooh, setup for that joke. Setup. That's a great joke. If you want to do that, go with Steamboat Willie. <laughs> They're all steamboats, <laughs> okay? Instead of a sled. <laughs> Instead of a sled, it's a okay. bunch of steamboats. I like it. Being pulled by mice, enslaved mice. Serial killer mice? My number 92. <laughs> my number 92 <laughs> is brand new to the list. And it is one of my favorite dungeon crawls I have played in a long time. And, and it's new to the list? It is. That's Tales of Red Dragon Inn. Whoa! Whoa! I, um, whoa! You have a Red Dragon Inn game in your top 100. I know. It was whoa! Very fair. What's next? Uh, Killer Bunnies from Outer Face? Or Nine, whatever? 91. Outer Face. <laughs> yeah. Tales from Munchkin. I really like this game. I like everything about it. I like the leveling up. I like the gameplay. I like the fact that the boards are printed and all the stuff's on there. I mean, if I had to put all that 
terrain on that board would be a pain in the neck. But mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I like the fun stories. It's easy to play. You always hit, which is nice. It's just how much damage will you do? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it just it's really a great fun game. It's easy to adjust the level of difficulty. It's just a ton of fun for me. And, so. and you don't mind the the paper map? No, I actually adore that. Okay. I, I definitely changed in this regard, but I like yeah. that because it's you set it up. It has all the terrain there. Right. The monsters are printed on there with their stats that's and stuff. That's cool. I mean, it I think saves so much trouble. Yeah, I hate looking for a bunch of tiles that you're going to place into it. It just gets yeah, sure, annoying. Sure. Yeah. Except for a couple of exceptions. All right. Your number 92 is also new to the list, and I like did double check because I can't believe this has never made the list before because I it's one of the best-selling games that's out. Every new version of it comes out gets in the top. When we do the Game Nerds best-selling games, it's always in those lists. And this is Unmatched. Oh, yeah. this is and the... And so the only thing I can think of is that maybe people vote for different types of Unmatched, Could but you be. can now vote for the system as a whole, maybe. and that's what made the list. Uh, the unmatched system. Also, Tales to Amaze has really brought this back in the line. That could be it too. Yeah. I don't know how widespread that is yet. I think more in the limelight is the Marvel stuff. Straight up, it's been selling like crazy. Those okay. Marvel sets. Um, but yeah, I was I, like I said, I'm surprised it hasn't been on the list before. I'm surprised it's actually not higher. But this is still great, and I get why people like this unmatched. It's just there's so much of it now. Yeah. And they just announced, what did they just announce? Something new, wasn't it? Witcher. The Witcher. I mean. Ah, yeah. You'll be tossing more than a coin for that one, I'm sorry. Just going to put it out there. Blink. Please move on. Blink. <laughs> Blink! <laughs> so, it's very exciting. I've, I've just received a letter from Tom Vassell. Let's have a look what it is, shall we? Dear Ben, just writing to give you a list of all the reasons I fired you from the Dice Tower. Let's start from the top. Number 91. I want you to know, <laughs> we just witnessed. He's never going to let that go. No, never. We just witnessed the most words put together in a row uh -huh. by Ben Maddox without a swear in it. Oh, wow. That yeah. was at least 15 words without yeah. a curse word in it. Yeah, agreed. That took a lot of editing. My number 91 <laughs> is new to the list. It's a dexterity game. It's a dexterity game that I know you like a lot. Oh, here we go. Oh, is that, it involve, so is that the banana one? Does it involve Vikings or it a does seesaw? Not. It, it involves neither. Is it from Itten? It is from Itten. Tokyo Highway? My number 91 is Tokyo Highway. How many games on your list are from Japan? To be honest. <laughs> 86. Mm -hmm. I'm, I, look, hey, I mean, maybe I just dig their aesthetic. I, maybe I like their approach to making games. Maybe. I mean, it's maybe not just... excited about the expansion coming then? Super excited about Rainbow City, baby. Um, but okay, yeah, this is a game where, where you look at it and you can kind of see what's happening here. You've got literally like popsicle sticks um, and these little cars and you've got a pair of tweezers that basically you're using. You, you put out your popsicle sticks, which are roads, and you have to follow certain placement rules, you know, and they go in different levels. And then you have to place a car. And it is such a cool idea. It mm. looks so neat on the table. And it's one that, I think dexterity games are great when you can kind of get it as soon as you see it. You're like, oh, I see what we're doing here. You know what I mean? It's not a lot of weird rules and stuff to get in the way. You're just placing a stick, placing a car, following some very simple placement rules. And it just works. It looks so cool. Um, and it's also one that I feel like people with varying kind of dexterity skill levels can do well at, right? Yeah. Certain games are like super punishing if you, if you, you know, just are not as good well, at Well, having dexterity. long, thin fingers is definitely It does advantage. help, it does help, but... Uh, Fat, chubby, you're gonna have a harder time. You'll have a little harder time, but it's still, it's, it's just awesome. I was, I was definitely looking at that rug. There's a mirror there, what do you mean? <laughs> Tom, uh, <laughs> you're looking a little woolen lately. Have you noticed that? You're looking a little shaggy. <laughs> my word. <laughs> All right, here we go. My number 91. So hurtful. Is a crossover. Already? With the people? With the people. Whoa! Okay, I'll cross over with you nerds. The people, the true voice of what's popular and, dare I say, hip, mm. 
You dared. My number it's 91 is The Surge for Planet X. Oh. Ho! This game is amazing. This is such a good, engaging deduction game. I love the way it delivers its information and uses an application to do something just clean. I mean, it's not like this is this is what I want games with apps to do. Use them this cleanly and cleverly and, and well integrated. Um, I really enjoy this game. It's a simple production. Everything that needs to be there is there and nothing that doesn't need to be there is there. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I really like that. The, the sequel, the, the Search for Lost Species one, I haven't played. It looked messy to me. Just at a glance, I was like, okay, there's a lot of there's a lot going on here visually, and I think it's because I'm coming at it from this one, which is so elegant, mm. so clean. Um, I'm not that interested in trying it, even though you're saying it's a better game. I think I, it is. I would try it, you know, but I'm not looking forward to it. I'm <laughs> I'm thrilled with I'll this. I'll play this under duress. So basically, no, I mean, I'm, I'm out, I would play it, but I'm not like. Jones looking play. to yeah. play it because I am so content with this one. You prefer the vast silence and isolation of space than you do to living creatures. Yes. Bear. All right. 91. My, <laughs> my number 91, <laughs> it's the fourth year on, and for the fourth time, Z is going to put it on his catch at Palooza list because mm. I know he still hasn't played it. Cool, let's go. And that is Monumental. Oh, yeah. You still haven't played this one. Just played it two, though. Yeah. You can play three, I think, okay. Three with people that know it and one player who doesn't, that's fine, yeah. Oh, man. Wait, <laughs> people what? know it and one player doesn't. I'm, I'm saying if Z. we're talking with Z, yeah, 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 yeah. That would be, that would <laughs> oh, be fine. Oh, oh. It's like a, I thought it was like a requirement type thing. <laughs> no, I mean, it's a Matthew Dunstan game. It's a deck building game. And, and I know. Yeah, it's I don't good. know why. I just, this is now, this is now available, though, right? This is now yeah, a little you more can, available. Yeah, you can get Finally. the retail edition, yeah. Finally. Without the minis, yeah. It's a retail edition, you said? Mm -hmm. <laughs> no, thank you. All right, well. No, okay. Right. I want D. I really Lux. enjoy this. I like deck building. There's a lot of deck building games on my list. Yeah. Uh, but this one, the deck building is actually, it's not so much the deck building, but how you deal with the cards as they come out. Yes. Which is a lot of fun. Okay. I like it. All right. Your number 91 has been on the list for five years and has always been in this area. It was 94, 97, 96, 82, 91. So wow. sticks around there. Very thematic Western themed game called Western Legends. All right. Just a very popular. Popular game. Thank you, Spencer, for the super chat. Um, I I like this game a lot too. I think it's a lot of fun, and this is one that I almost always see be played at a convention again. This somewhere gets played at cons it does. all the time. Yeah, it's a big this con is a game. Convention game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's there's like a ton of expansions, big box, and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's one of those ones that even the base game has so much involved with it. So yeah, this is one of those games that I bet is. A lot of people's favorite game. It's like their I can see lifestyle that. game. I can know? see that, for sure. 10% done. Done, Ooh. that's it. Do Let's we get go. to drop our clipboards every time we end a list? You may, if you wish. I refuse. <laughs> my own. You're a, my you're a follower. In space. Z is, Z is no a leader. No one can hear you drop. Mm, sure, something like that. I just I wanted to set up the easy part and then make you do the work. All right, so folks, on the Dice Tower channel this week, there's not a lot of videos. It's mostly, mostly this. We're doing two each day. We'll be back here at 2 p.m. But in between 2 p.m. and now, I'm going to do a little special quick video as we launch our Kickstarter at noon. Whoa! That's Hello! 47 minutes away and... Camille's hair is all turned gray, getting that ready. <laughs> and yours too, probably. No, I'm good. It's you're been you're looking gray. distinctly older than you it's were last week. It's mm. been gray, baby. Mm. There is, I, I call it rugged, maybe? A, a, mm. a mature? There's so much cool stuff on the Kickstarter, folks. Really? We definitely want you to check it out. <laughs> <laughs> Many of the games we've talked about today have promos. I yeah. Say, well, yes. Uh, at least some of the games we talked about. Actually, let me look here. Pick Red, up my uh, Tales of Red Dragon Inn, has a, we have a promo for that. Boom. Awesome. That's it. <laughs> several that's, of mine. That's, that's it for these. Yeah, several of them we've had. I mean, promos there are more, but not necessarily this year. Yes. 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 Anyway, so we'll see you all soon enough. Until next time, I'm Tom Basil. I'm Mike Delicio. I'm Z Garcia. Give me that crystal. I don't even like coffee, but if it was clear. Mm.